the upcoming policy. Shane Oliver, the Head of Investment Strategy and Chief Economist at AMP Capital joins us now. Shane, good morning. It's great to see you this morning and uh, lovely to see that, you know, stack of books behind you. Um, you know, everyone, anyone and everyone's expecting a big rate hike this time around. How much of it do you think is priced into risky assets like equities? I think most of it is priced in at this stage. Uh, that fall we've had since the mid-August high um, adjusted to a more hawkish stance by the, by the Fed. And, of course, uh, what Powell said last night was really just a reiteration of what he said in Jackson Hole two weeks ago. So that, that's why you didn't get an overly negative reaction by markets. Uh, and, um, you know, markets have adjusted to some degree by the same token, um, the Fed is continuing to raise interest rates, so it's not as if they've gone dovish yet. They're still far from it. Um, uh, the market uh, probably wouldn't be surprised by a 75 basis point hike in September. Then the focus will move on to the next meeting and also the economic data. So I think we're moving from a point where inflation and interest rates are the main concern to what the impact will be on the economic outlook. And if the economic data starts to soften dramatically, then we'll see another leg down in share markets. But uh, I, I guess at the moment, we're still in that in-between zone where markets are still guessing as to which way that will go. I mean, my take on it is that we came down quite sharply into, into a week or so ago, a few days ago. We got oversold. Uh, now we're having a bit of a bounce from that. But it's hard to be definitive as to whether we've seen the, the bear market bottom or not. Shane, good morning. You know, of course, uh, uh, that jury is still out in the U.S. market. But in India, if you're tracking the market, we're very close to lifetime highs and uh, we have a very strong momentum of our own. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, that's right. Uh, it is surprising. Um, an Indian market has had a few gyrations along the way uh, from those highs. Um, if you look at it on a, on a one-year basis, um, and, of course, some of those gyrations have been driven by what's going on globally. Um, the Indian share market is known to be somewhat more defensive. You know, exports and imports are a relatively small share of the Indian economy compared to other markets across Asia, and it's known to trade on a relatively high PE, and that's certainly been the case through this period, and it's been a relatively strong performer. It's one of the only major markets that are in decent positive territory so far this year. Uh, and I suspect that uh, through this period of uncertainty in markets, that will probably continue. I guess the downside for India will come when the, the global bear market, if you want to call it that, comes to an end and share markets decisively rebound, then India might become a relative underperformer, um, having been an outperformer uh, through the most recent period. Uh, you know, uh, Shane, a lot of our audience will be hoping that doesn't happen because still now it's been a good ride. We are still in the green for 2022, while, uh, you know, the U.S. markets are down, the Chinese markets as well are under some pressure. But getting back to, uh, you know, the Fed's trajectory in terms of rate hikes, what are you all factoring in? 75 basis points, it appears it's almost a done deal for September. Do you think at some point of time they'll have to reverse this rate hike cycle in 2023? Are you in that camp or you believe that's not going to happen? Uh, no, I am in that camp. I, I think we'll see more hikes uh, probably into the early part of 2023 and through the latter part of 2023, we will see rate cuts. Um, obviously, a lot of uncertainty about the short term, uh, but there are signs of light out there. If you look at uh, pipeline inflation pressures in the US, uh, business surveys, uh, whether it's the ISM or the PMIs, they all show that uh, selling prices are coming off or the pressure there is coming down. Uh, cost pressures are, are declining. Um, delivery lags are uh, slowing or are actually improving. Um, and, of course, uh, if you look at commodity prices, part of European gas and coal doesn't look so good. Um, look at the other commodity prices, they're off their highs, including gasoline and oil. Uh, all of those things, combined with some moderation in demand, uh, particularly in the labour market, which I think we will start to see in the next six months, then that will, I think, give us a decline in inflation, which will enable the Fed to, uh, to slow up and then ultimately start cutting interest rates as we go through the second half of next year. I guess the big debate in all of this is whether the US will go into recession. I think it's 50-50. Uh, I think they can still avoid it, uh, providing the inflation numbers come down quickly enough. I think, by the way, we have seen the peak in US inflation. Um, the, the other big question becomes, well, if they do go into recession, will it be a deep one or a mild one? I, I have a feeling it's going to be a relatively mild one because apart from the inflation problem, uh, the, the, the signs of excess that you normally see 
in the US prior to major, major recessions, such as massive overinvestment or a housing boom, um, aren't there to the same degree. So I think if we do have a recession in the US, it will be a relatively mild one. So all of those things give me optimism on, say, a 12 to 18 month horizon. And uh, yeah, short answer to your question is yes, we do see the Fed starting to cut interest rates later next year. Okay, so a cut in interest rates next year by the Fed, uh, at least in the second half of uh, 2023, uh, that, that seems to be a logical estimate by a lot of uh, experts that we've spoken to. But Shane, you know, there's another narrative that because of what's happening across the globe, whether it's the US recessionary situation or even the, uh, the power crisis in Europe, a lot of outsized flows from across the globe will move into markets like India. Uh, is that your assumption as well? that we would get a lot more by way of flows because of the challenges across the globe? Well, it may. It may be the case. India is, a rel I mean, it's perverse, but it is a relatively defensive market. We've seen that recently, that global markets had a rough drop. India's done a lot better. Um, it's not as exposed to global trade. Um, it's not at the centre of tensions in Europe or even in Asia, although there are issues on the border with China, but they're not as intense as the one around runs around Taiwan. So that may benefit India on a longer term basis. And the other aspect is if these tensions with China continue to escalate over time, US companies you know, cut back their exposure to China, India will benefit from that. Uh, to some degree, as will other Asian uh, countries away from away from China. So, yeah, there are there are grounds for optimism regarding India on a longer term basis. And uh, my view has been that, uh, yeah, sure, China is on its way to becoming the world's biggest economy, or slowing down progress on that front. But uh, a decade or two after that, India will be the world's biggest economy. Our bet we're still talking about many decades away, but I think that is the direction we're heading in. And of course, India's. Uh, stable, relatively stable democracy um, is a big factor in that regard. Mm. Okay, so in that case, what do you see as the gains for the rest of the year? India has already outperformed, uh, you know, most markets are, da are down about double digits this year, while India is seeing a gain. Um, would you put fresh money to work now? And if yes, over the next 12 to 18 months, what could the upside uh, gains be? Well, I think in the very short term, there's still downside risk for markets uh, globally let out of the US and Europe. And if that transpires, then India will be dragged down into that. But I would be using that as a buying opportunity. History tells us that in the aftermath of US midterm elections, um, and believe it or not, this year has played out pretty much like we often see in midterm election years in the US, albeit a little bit more severe, um, you normally see markets rally. And uh, I would be looking to buy into any weakness we see over the next couple of months. And from about November uh, sometime, I think we're going to see fairly decent rallies and that will also benefit the Indian share market. The one thing I'm a little less clear on is whether the Indian share market will take a bit of a backseat as global markets start to recover or, or whether it will remain an outperformer. And I'm, I must say I'm, I'm neutral on that view. All right, uh, Shane, so a short point is that Indian markets are trading at elevated uh, multiples or valuations. But uh, we seem to be still, we are still going to outperform. Is that the view? Well, as I say, I'm, I'm a bit open on that, that front. I, I mean, there is a, there, there is a, re a reality of mean reversion here that India has been an outperformer. Yeah. It trades on a somewhat higher PE compared to many other markets around the region. Uh, for example, the, the Southeast Asia is trading on something like 11 to 14 times PE compared to about 19 times PE for India, if you compare it to 2023 earnings. So those arguments would, would suggest that once the recovery comes globally, that India will be a relative underperformer. Um, a counter argument, I guess, is some of those geopolitical issues which might continue to benefit India. So that's why some, I'm, I'm a bit neutral on that one as to whether India will be an outperformer or underperformer. I think the better way to play it would be for investors to allocate money into markets as we go into any more weakness over the next couple of months. Um, but to do that equally between India and, and global base or on a neutral basis in terms of India versus the rest of the world. Okay, well, Shane, we will leave it at that. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in and all the best. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Okay, well, that's the word coming in from Shane Oliver. Yes, there could be a recessionary situation, but guess what? He's also expecting rate cuts by the Fed in the second half of the next year. So he said that a recession may in all likelihood be averted and then followed by rate cuts from the Fed. Let's do one thing. Let's slip into a quick break. Our list of top 10 stocks coming up in just a bit.